Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this series of videos, we will be focusing our attention on the steel connection workflow for designing gusset connections for a variety of different vertical bracing situations. The different vertical brace joints that we have available in RAM Connection Standalone include the column beam brace joint, the vertical X brace joint, a chevron brace, and also a column base with a gusset connection. Each of these different joints have different column, beam, and brace sections that are permitted to be used in that connection type, and several of these particular joints can also support seismic provisions. We will now turn our attention to our sample model in RAM Connection Standalone. And as you can see, I will be working on the column base joint I've currently selected. This is a column base joint that's also been defined with a bracing section. My bracing section is a round HSS section. When you're ready to assign your base plate connection to the currently selected joint, you can select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the assign option, and you're gonna to go to your base plate connections area. Here, I'm gonna select the options for a smart gusset base plate. Once this option is selected, we can click close to confirm that a connection has been assigned to the currently selected joint. Now, if we would like to edit any of the parameters manually or even review the connection information for this joint, we can go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. This is considered a gusset connection, so we're gonna select the gusset option. Now, once we're on the connection pad, we're gonna be able to review the connection information. We're gonna review the status of the connection design, which will be indicated in the ribbon. This will be color coded to indicate the status of your connection design. We can modify our parameters and also review our results and DXF plan. Now, if I go over in the connection pad, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. I can see that I can modify my optimization criteria and I can review my base plate information as well as the interfaces. These that indicate your connections that reflect your gusset plate information. So here, if I were to take a look at my interfaces, I could see that these are all different areas I can modify. I have a right brace indicated on this base plate, but you are able to design base plates with both a right and a left hand brace if that was applicable. And you can also mod modify the connections for the gusset to either the brace or the column or the base plate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select my right brace. I'm gonna take a look at my gusset to brace connection. And then I can see that currently it has it selected as a bolted connection. For this style connection, basically there's going to be a plate that's gonna be inserted into your bracing section and that will be bolted to your gusset plate. Now I do have some options here. I can change it from a bolted to a welded connection if I would prefer. And you can see that that has been updated here. Now what you're gonna notice is that when the connection type is changed from bolted to welded, you will receive a warning because the gusset size is increased, but the base plate size did not automatically increase. So if we were to take a look at, let's take a look at the DXF view, I can see my gusset is actually extending past my base plate in this scenario. Now, if we were to re-optimize our base plate, then the base plate size would be adjusted to accommodate this new configuration. So up in your ribbon toolbar, you do have this option to optimize. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see things are resized based on changes that you made. Let's go back to our 3D view, and we can see that our interaction ratio has been updated. Now, before we leave this area, you're gonna notice that you do have a lot of options for base plates, so let's take a look at some of those. Here we just went with longitudinal position, which basically means you're gonna enter a grid of where your 
anchor bolts will be located. You can also go to a transverse position or a customized approach. In the customized approach, you'll be able to enter the coordinates of each individual anchor that you have in your base plate. We can also go down, we can change the anchor type and also the head type. We can change the material for your anchor bolts. Now, in addition to being able to customize your anchor and base plate and gusset information, from this connection pad, you can also review your calculations. So what we're going to do is in the ribbon toolbar, I can click on this results icon and I can review the steel connection report for the currently selected base plate. If I would like some additional information in this report, I can click on the view formulas icon, which will bring up all the formulas and variables that were used to arrive at these results. These also correspond to sections in the code or equations within the code for reference. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the report. I can review my DXF. I can export this DXF to my drawings or I can also save my changes. For this example, I'm happy with my connection design. I'm gonna save them, exit the connection pad, and then you can see that my base plate has been updated in my joint selection area for the changes I made. At this point, this concludes the process for assigning a gusset connection to a base plate. This would be a column base joint with a brace also assigned to it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.